Hi everyone, welcome to this new webinar. Uh, we will start in a few minutes. Um, so today we will present you the feedback on the rollout of uh, an indoor uh, active RFID tracking solution at Renault factories. So if you have any questions uh, during the webinar, feel free to ask them um, by using the interface and we will answer them at the end of the session. So let's start. I will introduce our speakers. So today we have uh, Tiffany Wolfugel from uh, um, Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Group. Then we have Gonzague Venu from uh, ELA Innovation. And finally, we have Laurent Dupuis from IER um, to present this webinar. Quickly, uh, the, the agenda of this session. So we will start with the context and the project management. Then we will talk about the uh, choice of the indoor location technologies. Then we will do a focus on the tags uh, were used on the, this project. And we will talk about a little bit about the data collection. And finally, we will conclude with uh, the feedback and the next step of this project. So I leave the floor to Tiffen to present the contact, the context and the project management. Um, hello everyone. So I'm, I'm working um, at Renault Group, a French car manufacturer that is part of the alliance uh, Renault Nissan Mitsubishi. And I, I will do an, uh, an overview of the manufacturing um, of, of uh, Renault. So, uh, in the Alliance, it's uh, 139 uh, production sites, but in Mono, it's 23 uh, assembly factories and 18 me mechanical factories uh, all around the world. And um, I'm working on the project, uh, digital project um, direction, sorry, um, that will um the the goal is to modernize and to um transform the the factories uh, of uh, of Renault and of the alliance thanks to digital projects and um all these projects are um are part of five pillars pillars that you can see uh, on on the left on the right um and all these um, uh, five uh, you know, uh, we have to to um, make foundation and enablers about uh, uh, connected plants and cybersecurity and some platform uh, data warehouse to uh, be able to to do this uh, this project. So um, here we will talk about the the pillars uh, full track and chase, um, which is a, a program. Uh, the goal is to uh, geolo locate um Fanny, can you change the slide please thank you <laughs> so um the 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 goal is to massively um, acquire industrial data from the field so from the plants um in order to analyze them uh, for a daily operational management or for midterm uh, analysis and improvement or even for optimization um, for our new projects. Um, we have started this uh, program in January 2017, and um, it is a very transversal program uh, all of, in all the company. And so we have uh, listed some uh, use cases and um, decided uh, to to start with one of uh, with some of them of these use cases and in July 2018 uh, we made a partnership with uh, IER and ELA um, on the on the project of packaging tracking uh, so that's what we will talk about and um, uh, for one year we made a, a pilot on on one on one of our uh, company, uh, one of our plants, and uh, now we are doing the rollout of the project and industrialize uh, uh, 
the solution. So the challenging of this project, uh, packaging tracking uh, project, is to um, to equip eight European factories within two years. So it's mean uh, 100, um, 800,000 uh, square feet and um, lots of uh, forklift connected and beacon, localization beacon. So um, these challenges is to geolocate and track all the physical items. So here in, in the project is packaging uh, items uh, and use them um, in the industrial uh, environment. So um, this uh, packaging project, pro project has two different use cases. One is to monitor uh, and optimize the packaging flows. So uh, a packaging uh, is um, a Renault uh, responsibility and can cost uh, quite a lot and, and is going back and forth from uh, so suppliers to our plants or from uh, uh, several plants in our um, in the company, and and we want to uh, optimize uh, uh, the the flows of this uh, packaging and reduce the amount of um, packaging by uh, five or twenty percent uh, thanks to uh, our, our project. Uh, we can also um, reduce by eighty percent the emergency logistic costs. Uh, thanks to a better uh, monitoring of, of this flow uh, on a daily uh, on a daily management, and um, thanks to it, we can also remove the no added value uh, related to emergencies and to the searching of uh, objects, so of of packaging uh, in a plant. So now I will uh, let uh, Laurent speak about the indoor location technologies and to explain you um, how we locate within the plants uh, the packaging. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, I'm uh, Laurent Dupuis, uh, a project manager at IER, um, in charge of this uh, project. Uh, the IER is a subdivision of Bolloré Group that operate in uh, three uh, main areas, which are uh, logistic and transport, by sea, by air, by, by, by there is trio also. Uh, a second uh, division, which is uh, communication, uh, music, TV, uh, advertising, and a third uh, subdivision, which is a blue system that uh, operates all the mobility systems. Next, uh, yeah, so um, I hear, uh, um, uh, then uh, is uh, working in different area. Uh, it's uh, 700 people uh, all over the world. Uh, we have um, offices uh, in the US, in India, in, uh, in Asia, Africa, uh, because we are installing different kind of uh, systems. Uh, we have uh, automatic systems that are uh, access uh, systems uh, for car, for people uh, in the station, in airport. Uh, uh, where we will report uh, in, in railway station uh, um, tickets um, uh, systems and, and um, uh, communication and interactive systems. Uh, we have uh, the so called uh, electromobility um, that are uh, charging points, but also we operate uh, an electric car in uh, some uh, big cities. Uh, um, like Los Angeles or London, uh, with the electric car that uh, are operated by by Bolloré. And the stat is uh, an <laughs> automatic system uh, to distribute uh, fines. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> and then uh, my own um, business uh, uh, activity, which is uh, track and trace, tracking and, and tracing of uh, assets or people. Yes, next one. We will go more in detail about IER. Yeah. So um, um, we are uh, working uh, with different technology uh, like RFID, but also with uh, IoT, 
uh, um, all of our supply chain and um, uh, for with using RFID, but also uh, IoT uh, to uh, track uh, vehicles uh, and and fleet uh, of whatever of. Uh, so for example, in France, uh, we are um, tracking the the Caterpillar uh, fleet all over the all over France. We have also a solution for proof of delivery. We have uh, systems for order pick, uh, order picking. Yeah. So so you see, uh, we are uh, working in different uh, uh, area. Okay. Then. Next one, yeah. So uh, we have been chosen by uh, Renault uh, with a, a quite innovative solution uh, that includes uh, two technology. The first technology uh, that we include in our solution is a uh, use of passive RFID for uh, the packaging identification. Uh, Renault have started uh, for years uh, an extensive uh, tagging of all their uh, packaging that are used uh, between uh, uh, their facilities and their suppliers using passive RFID tags. Today, there is a la large choice of tags uh, that can be used on different uh, support. Uh, it, it works now on metal, on wood, on plastics, uh, and, and so on, and at a very low cost. And the, the cost of those passive tags are now uh, very, very low and can be uh, used uh, with, uh, uh, on big quantities. The second technology uh, that have been chosen uh, by uh, IER is uh, the active RFID. That is a, a, um, a solution proposed by Eli Innovation for indoor location. Uh, this uh, active uh, um, solution have been uh, chosen for two big reasons. The first one is that they don't need any infrastructure to install uh, the beacon uh, on the different facilities. And so it means that it's uh, very easy and quick to install and very flexible. No wiring, no supply, no network. The second uh, reason uh, is um, the use of uh, low frequency uh, of this solution. And, and Gonzague will explain you uh, more better than me how it works. And um, that uh, uh, allow this system to work perfectly in very difficult environment where you have a lot of metal like uh, automotive industry, like an in automotive industry, uh, with no rebound, no masking uh, issues, uh, like for some other technology. And then it's a very valuable solution in, in such an environment. So that was the second reason why we choose this, uh, this solution. On top of that, you can adjust uh, the, the coverage of the beacon between three to uh, 80 feet. And also you have a lot of functionality to filter and process the location data that are provided by the, by the beacons. And next one. Okay, so here it's, it's a small explanation about our apps and, and Gonzaga will explain you more uh, how their solution uh, are working and, and what are the components needed uh, to, to, to work. Gonzague, if you want to give more yeah. detail. Yeah, thank you, Laurent. Uh, and, and, and good afternoon to, to everyone. So for, the, for those who don't know me already, so my name is, is Gonzague. So I'm in charge of the, of the business development uh, in uh, USA and Latin America at, at, at ELA Innovation. So uh, I will do a brief aside regarding the, the, the technology and then I'll hand over to, to Laurent so he can uh, keep going with the with the presentation, so on the on the slide that uh, uh, we see uh, we see an image on the on the top left side uh, regarding the active RFID solution. So we can see that the uh, the solution the system is composed by uh, several elements. Uh, so one of them obviously is the is the tag uh, that we are using for the geolocation, and the other one is the the infrastructure uh, that will be used to transmit and receive the the information. Uh, so basically, the, the tags that we are using work on demand. Uh, that means they will be activated, activated uh, only when it's needed. Uh, this will be done thanks to uh, a tag activator and an antenna. Uh, so both of them uh, are installed on the on the forklift, uh, and they are using a very low frequency. Uh, so that means the message uh, is sent from the, the the tag activator and the 
the, the antenna directly to the to the tag, uh, and this will be done through very low frequency. So the tags are installed all over the warehouse, and when the forklift uh, pass nearby, the tags will be activated uh, thanks to 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 this signal. Uh, then the tag will answer uh, to the to a reader that is also installed on the forklift, but the tag will answer with a high frequency system. Uh, so, so, so we will go back more in details after that on the on the difference between the two uh, the two level of, of frequency. But to make it simple, so the the forklift activate the ties, and then then the forklift is able to geolocate itself. Uh, depending on the tie's uh, position, so so um, Laurent, I'll, I'll let you continue with the with the presentation of the of the slide. Yes, thank thank you, Gonzac. Um, you see on the bottom of uh, on the bottom left uh, of this slide, you see a, a small uh, example. It's a, it's a part of the assembly uh, plant uh, of Renault uh, where we where we do the pilot the pilot. Where you see the red dots that are the beacons, the tags, uh, and you see a forklift that have a certain uh, way. And uh, um, as soon as he's near a beacon, he is activated the beacon, and he received then from the beacon uh, the, the the identity of the beacon. And somewhere, uh, Renault have a, a table where we see uh, the identity of the beacon and the physical address and the physical location of this uh, of this beacon, so that they can translate. Uh, the code of, of the beacon and the real physic, uh, the real um, place uh, where the, the forklift is. And okay, so on on the right side uh, you see um, uh, how the, the 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 forklift is operating. The, lo the localization uh, by the beacon uh, start as soon as the forklift uh, started. Uh, then, uh, at the moment, the, the forklift driver de decide to take a load. Uh, we have an optical detector that are uh, that is uh, starting the, RFI, the passive RFID uh, reader. The, the third figure, um, the, the passive tags are answering uh, to this uh, passive uh, uh, technology. Then uh, we get the identity of uh, the, the the palette or the or the the, the, the Oh, sorry, uh, the, the containers or whatever, and then uh, the last uh, figure uh, we aggregate the location uh, information with uh, the identity of of the load uh, that is taken by the forklift, and then uh, we send uh, this information uh, to the Renault network with a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, this is the way it works. next one yeah okay so here you see uh, how it looks like uh, this is the the kit that uh, can be installed on um, most of the forklift of the market uh, whatever the the brand uh, fenwick or young young uh, young meister or um, yeah and then um, you see on the right side the the, the kit installed on the forklift and you have a, 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 a blue box that include the, the RFID uh, reader, the ELA solution, uh, the activator and, and the receiver. You have also an edge computer that is used to filter the, da the data uh, from the passive uh, tags. Because of course, uh, in a passive RFID technology, uh, you could, could not avoid to read also the tags that are in the environment. So we have an advanced filter uh, approach uh, to, um, filter all the data that are collected and and get at the end only uh, the tags that are uh, transported by the by the forklift and also we build a certain uh, flat file that uh, Renault is uh, is required is requiring and and we push uh, this uh, this file uh, on uh, on the network on the Renault network by means of a wi-fi connection it's okay here you, you have a photo of a, of a forklift that is uh, working on uh, again in the assembly uh, workshop of, uh, of Renault. Uh, with, uh, on, on the top, with a small red circle, you see um, a beacon a tag from ELA that we found on, on a different um, structure of the, of, the, of the building. Those tags are put 
in all the interesting place uh, where a new want to to follow and track and trace the uh, the, the container and and the and, and the bins you see on the on the bottom uh, the the passive tags that Renault is, is applying on on the on the polystyrene packaging um that you see and you see here four uh, packaging with uh, each one uh, two tags and we are using two tags because the 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 forklift can take the 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 packaging by different uh, way <laughs> so to have, to to be sure that we have a 100 percent reading of of those uh, packaging uh, at the moment, they are using two tags per, uh, per container. And you see the white antennas on the, on the front. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Tiffen, if you want to continue. I think it's for me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <Laura. laughs> so, so, so maybe uh, before to go uh, into the presentation of the, of the tag and the, and the solution, I will do a brief overview about ELA innovation. So, so let's uh, see some few key numbers about the about the company. So, ELA Innovation is a French company uh, which is actually celebrating its uh, 20 years birthday this year. So, we have uh, 30 plus collaborators in the in the company, uh, which a third uh, are dedicated to the to the R and D. So, uh, we, we we are we are a small company, but we are able to adapt our products um, easily to the market and we do not hesitate to to invest into developing new products if if needed so we tend to be quite uh, reactive i will say so uh, french french company but um, lately we have seen an improvement on the on the international sales uh, and more specifically this year uh, with plus 60 percent uh, and we do uh, calculate 600,000 plus uh, tags uh, already sold uh, so far. So thanks to a fundraiser in, in 2018, so we have been able to, to develop our team, uh, but also increase our presence uh, worldwide. Uh, so, so basically our DNA at, uh, at ELA Innovation is based on, on three uh, criteria. So it will be a long battery life products, um, that that that's really what we try to to focus on uh, we are dedicated to the to the to the industrial environment uh, so really the the ties that we are manufacturing today uh, are, are uh, made to resist in a in a harsh environment uh, and all of this offer um, offers a, 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 a low tco uh, so so thanks to the to the battery life of the product and the the resistant of the of the tags so we are able to have a, a cost of ownership that is uh, really uh, low uh, next slide please thank you uh, so so the tags the tag that we have chosen for for this project uh, i mean in, in correlation with the with the different uh, actors involved in the in the project so this is the pug dot so the pug dot is an active rfid product uh, that brings uh, several advantages. So as you can see on the on the slide, so first of all, it's waterproof. It's IP68, so it is made uh, to 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 resist uh, to the dust, uh, humidity, water. Uh, it's it's IP68. So 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 we are good with this. It's a, it's a robust um, robust casing. So as I was telling you, it's really made to be used uh, in industrial environment. Uh, we, we we have a long battery life uh, for the for the product. So with the um, uh, standard configuration, so we, we will be up to uh, to ten years of battery life. Uh, and as uh, Laurent was saying, so it's really easy to install. Uh, only with a sticker or also I mean can be screwed directly to the wall. It's it's really easy to install. So this tech this technology sorry uh, is the one that we choose uh, as as it's an on-demand technology uh, with a detection area that is highly accurate and a preci precision that can be close to uh, to one meter so it's very robust solution that can be used in uh, harsh conditions and very easy to very easy to install uh, next slide please so now, if we if we go a bit more into the the, the technical specification of the of the solution, uh, how is it possible to reach uh, such high accuracy in the detection range? So 
we can do it thanks to the use of a technology that involves uh, two frequencies, uh, the low and the high frequency solution. So this is the, the active RFID. So we have on this slide uh, two graphs. Uh, so, so, so the first one that we are uh, seeing on the, on the top is um, a graph that is showing the, the, the high frequency technology. So uh, it's a 433 megahertz. And we see here the variation of the RSSI according to various uh, distances. Uh, and what is particularly interesting to observe is that the curves are, qu are quite irregular. So this, this is reflected uh, by the waves with up and downs. So this means that the signal uh, decreases with the distance and creates some, some fluctuations. So it's not so easy, uh, I will say, to adjust uh, the detection range of a reader. Uh, if it works with high frequency, it requires some uh, manual adjustments. And once you did succeed, succeed, succeed uh, sorry, in, in tuning this, uh, then you can just copy paste the, 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 the parameters. Uh, you will have to prepare the next reader and you will have to adjust again the, the configuration. Um, on the second one that we see at the, at the bottom of the, of the slide, so we are seeing uh, low frequency and actually it's very low frequency. We are talking about uh, 125 uh, kilohertz and we see the evolution of the RSSI uh, also depending on the, on, on the reading distance. Uh, but on this one, we see no fluctuations uh, of the curves. So, so there is a clear bijective relationship between the reading distance and the RSSI. So thanks to this, uh, adjusting the, the, the detection distance is something that is easy to, to duplicate. And this is an advantage that deeply uh, facilitates the, deploy the deployment of the, of the solution. Uh, another plus of the, of the technology is that the, 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 the low frequency implies a very high wavelength, uh, which concretely gives us a very good immunity against uh, metallic environments. So as Laurent was saying, I mean, you can install the tag either on a plastic, on wood, or on metal. Uh, that will not have any impact on the, on the um, on the transmission and on the fact that we need to read the, the signal. Um, also, so, so some, some key uh, points that are, that are important to, to, to remind is that the tag, so we really send the frames on demand, only on demand. So permanent useless radio uh, emissions are voided. Uh, and, and we know that uh, in, in that specific case at, at uh, Renault, a plant, but also in any other uh, factory or, or warehouse where we need to install the solution, it's quite challenging to avoid situations with a noisy environment uh, due to the to the radio waves. So tags in that case will send the frame only when forklift equipped with an activator uh, pass next to it, uh, and this works perfectly. I was about to say, no matter the speed of the forklift, uh, obviously there is a limit, but um, I mean, if, if we consider a speed above like 30 kilometers, we will be able to read, uh, to read the information. So, so we see that the tags are both very reactive and long battery life. So they will consume energy only uh, when they are communicated with the, with the, with the tie activator and the, and the reader. So they will save a lot of power in comparison to many other types of tags that, send, that, are, that are sending the, the radio emissions according to a, a fixed permanent pre-programmed uh, frequency. So the key points here with this solution is uh, high autonomy with the tag and very low uh, cost of ownership. Next one. And that goes back to Europe. Thank you, Gonzac. Uh, yeah, so um, what are the, the data that uh, we are collecting and sending to Renault? There is three uh, main kind of data. The first is the uh, identity of the pallet or the container. Uh, we send to Renault the EPC, the RSSI, the read count, the, um, the kind of uh, pallet or container. This is uh, encoded the EPC. Also, we send uh, the location information. Uh, the, the identifier of the beacon that have been uh, uh, passed near. Um, 
we send the Z term when, the, when this event takes place, the RSSI of, of the beacon, uh, the battery flag. If, uh, if one of the beacon have a, have approach to the low battery level, then he send a specific flag that uh, we are sending back to Renault to say them, be careful, there, there is um, a beacon that is a uh, low battery, uh, please uh, change it. And the third kind of data we are sending to Renault is uh, all necessary uh, contextual data, uh, like the reference of the forklift, uh, the site, or any kind of data that uh, is necessary. Uh, this um, uh, set of data is built by an edge computer that is embedded in the in the box or on the top of the on, on the forklift, and all those data are, are pushed to the the data repository of Kono and the, the so-called full track and trace database uh, that are used afterwards uh, by their by their other systems like warehouse management system, transport management system, or uh, any kind of use that uh, they can do with such. Okay, next. Tiffen. I will take back with that. Um, so just a, a feedback on the pilot that we have made for uh, one year. Um, it was an area of 21,500 uh, square feet. And we have tagged uh, 3,000 packages. Um, what was really nice is that we had the weekly exchanges uh, between project team members and, and uh, IER and uh, ELA. And thanks to that, we made a continuously improvement on the solution um, to, to consider the operational feedback and to uh, to take the, the operator's uh, uh, constraints, uh, like the visions uh, on the forklift, for example. So we, we change a little bit some, uh, some aspects of the solution. Um, we also uh, implemented uh, in-house data visualization um, to have a, a management of the inventory, uh, some entry and exit of packaging to, to, to know uh, which, uh, which packaging and how many uh, enters or, or leave a, a plant or an area. And we could, uh, thanks to this data, analyze the retention periods uh, of a packaging in inside an area. Um, so, we thanks thanks to thanks to that uh, we have um, uh, we, we have some uh, some benefits and and uh, and we will industrialize uh, the solution in uh, eight in uh, eight sites uh, within two years so it's mean more than uh, five hundred thousand uh, packaging. Uh, that will be uh, tracked with uh, passive RFID and uh, 160 forklift um, connected with the solution. Um, and for the location uh, beacons that are on the walls, um, it's approxim approximately 5,600 uh, uh, ELA beacons that we will put in order to connect and equip um, the, the whole logistic areas of eight uh, industrial sites. Um, we have also a study in, in progress to identify with um, uh, ELA tags uh, a rolling, rolling basis. Uh, so it's not the location beacon, but uh, used as a, as a, um, an identifiers of, of an object. Um, and, just to make a feedback on the strengths of the solution, um, I highlight three different points. So the first one is um, the goal was to have a factory-wide detection and uh, mostly not to have a fixed point like, like gate uh, on, uh, on the entry or exit of, of an, uh, an area. Uh, this is uh, really nice to have a flexibility on the um, internal films uh, in the plants. So the, the forklift will not have to, 
to go uh, through the gates and never change their um, their circuit. That, and so um, the flexibility uh, was a really a, a, a big uh, challenge. Then uh, it is e easy to install or to modif modify. Um, in in our plant, we have uh, the the site and the logistic implantation uh, is changing a lot uh, over like two, two or three months uh, every two or three months. So uh, it is it was really important for us to um, to be able to change the beacon localization. Um, so just uh, support glued to the post, and so it's easy uh, removable. And, and the third um, substance is uh, the performance and the robustness of the solution and of the of the beacon um, of the beacon. So we have a 100% detection rate, which was really what we wanted uh, on on the, the solution on the uh, forklift, uh, the connected forklift, and also the the beacon uh, have a 100. Uh, percent detection uh, activation and um, it is possible to locate the packaging at uh, 10 meters uh, in, in certainty can we say and what is what really important also uh, what the duration of of the battery of the, of the beacon um, we wanted uh, at least five years of uh, autonomy so that we will not change the beacon every every year and and uh, so it will cost a lot and and it will uh, be really uh, complicated also to to install and and uh, update all these um, uh, beacons so that's why the three different strengths uh, of the solution and um, and we were really glad to work with the uh, IER and ELA uh, on this solution. Uh, Laurent, if you want to take the last slide. <laughs> okay, Th thank you, Tiffen. Uh, th thank you for, for, for the thanks. It was also a pleasure to work with you and uh, with Renault, of course. Um, uh, the, this last slide to say that, uh, of course, uh, we have already some are available for uh, for your proof of concept or if you want to start a pilot uh, of the one or your site and that we have some uh, high volumes it means the mass production from fall uh, 2020. Uh, just to say that for the us um, uh, of course uh, uh, we have started a specific uh, a qualification and certification uh, due to your specific regulation laws in, 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 in hf uh, Standard uh, is a bit different from the, the one in Europe, but uh, for sure it will be uh, available uh, very soon, also for US. That's okay for me. Now, if you have uh, the question, but uh, okay. Okay, thank you, Laurent, and thank you, uh, thank you all for your attention. So uh, now, if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Um, we will answer. Uh, answer your question so if you if if you don't have questions um, or if you think about questions uh, after this session uh, we will send you uh, the reply link of this uh, webinar um, and uh, you can ask questions uh, by email i will um, transmit them uh, to our speakers There is one question about the sharing of the PowerPoint. Yeah, so um, we can share the, the, the PowerPoint in PDF format. Uh, so you can send me an email uh, to the, the email address uh, of the invitation. I will send you the, the presentation for sure. So, I think we don't have any questions uh, about this uh, clear presentation, so maybe we can close uh, the webinar. And um, thank you all for your for your attention, and thank you, uh, Laurent Gonzaga and uh, Tiffen for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you to all. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.